Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. I hope you are good today. Right, today I want to talk about African complacency, African negligence, and African lack of diligence that is going to cause Africa to get into a situation where all our opportunities will be taken over by races and people that pay attention to detail. Races and people who are not lazy, who are willing to work and go out into this world and get what belongs to them. It has become very fashionable for Africans to talk about the Chinese invasion. It has become fashionable for Africans to use the rhetoric that Africa is colonizing, I mean, uh, China is colonizing Africa. It has become the byword, a password, um, a means for people to start a conversation and to sound like they are awoke. They start to talk about the threat of China. Now, I've got big issues with using China as a threat and talking about China as a threat, yet it is the country that brought liberation to a lot of African countries. A lot of countries like Zimbabwe are free today because of the weapons and training that was given by the Chinese and the Russians. And not only that, the reason why the sanctions that are on Zimbabwe today are not UN sanctions, it is only because China and Russia vetoed the European powers that wanted to institute UN sanctions for Zimbabwe taking its land and Zimbabwe participating in the Congo War. But if you get used to this rhetoric, this rhetoric that you Africans use without thinking, it becomes problematic. You get an African talking about how the Chinese investing in Africa is a problem, but yet the African himself does not want to invest in Africa. The Zimbabwean is one of the most, 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 most guilty of Africans who complain about Chinese investment in Zimbabwe, who complain about the Chinese coming to take up opportunity in Zimbabwe, but yet Zimbabweans do not take up opportunity in Zimbabwe for themselves. The Chinese come into Zimbabwe, they find opportunities where Zimbabweans can't find opportunity. The Chinese come into Zimbabwe and invest money into Zimbabwe when the Zimbabwean does not want to invest in Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean is absconding responsibility to develop Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean does not bank in the Zimbabwean banking system. The Zimbabwean does not pay taxes in Zimbabwe. But he is surprised when the Chinese government come to the Zimbabwean government and offer the Zimbabwean government loans to develop the infrastructure, to develop the healthcare system, and to develop the schooling system. This is negligence. This is what I call uh, wanting to eat your cake and have it too. Zimbabweans want to see Zimbabwe develop, but they don't want to invest in Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans want to see Zimbabwe move forward, but they don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to create jobs. They don't want to invest. They always have a reason why they cannot invest in Zimbabwe, but they never see that the Chinese are willing to invest in Zimbabwe while they are running away from the opportunities in Zimbabwe. Every other African country is following the very same trajectory. Africans who are looking upon opportunities in their countries, they are buying cars, they are building houses, they are consuming and never investing in creating the jobs and exploiting the resources and opportunities that are in their countries. But when the Chinese do it, they've got a problem. The Chinese get to Africa, they see so much opportunity, they tell their country people about the opportunities in Africa. They invite their relatives, they invite other Chinese people to come and take up the opportunity in Africa. The Zimbabwean talks negative about his country. The Zimbabwean will never promote Zimbabwe to other Africans, to African Americans, and to other moneyed classes of people all across the world, because the Zimbabwe is pessimistic about his own country. But when the Chinese go back to China and they tell Chinese people about the opportunities in Africa, about the opportunities in Zimbabwe, about the importance of coming back with them to Zimbabwe to invest in the resources, to invest in the gold, in the diamonds, the Chinese see so much opportunity in Zimbabwe that they invite their own relatives, they invite their friends and family, but the Zimbabwean doesn't do that. 
Then the Zimbabwean wants to bitch and moan about the Chinese coming to take Zimbabwean opportunity. That's idiotic. It's foolish. It's craziness. In this world of competition, in this world of scarce resources, when people discover a nation like Zimbabwe that's filled with opportunity, a nation where a person can get a, a claim to gold, a claim to diamonds, a claim to chrome, with such ease, they're not going to waste time. They're going to take up the opportunity. They're going to invest their money. They're not going to consume. They're not going to drive the Mercedes. They're not going to drive the BMW. They're going to put their money. They're going to invite their relatives. They're going to put their money together with their relatives. They're going to go to the Chinese government and get loans to come to Zimbabwe and take up the opportunity. And while they are doing that, you are getting loans in London, in, Ch in South Africa, and in, um, in America for houses, cars, and furniture instead of coming back home to take up the opportunity that the Chinese, the Germans, the British, and everybody else sees. Even the South Africans, the Boers in South Africa, see opportunity in your country. They're filling up the airplanes, but you are not. You won't even go to African Americans or British or British uh, uh, Africans to tell them about the opportunity in Zimbabwe and pulling your money together to invest in Zimbabwe. And then you wonder why the Chinese are coming to take up your opportunity. You wonder why the Lebanese were coming to take up your diamonds. You wonder why you did not see any benefits from your diamonds. You were absent. You were not available. You were not in the bushes. Fortunately, I had an opportunity to be in the bushes of Chiazo when the diamonds were there. And the number of, of, of Lebanese, the number of Chinese that we used to meet there, the number of Israelis compared to the number of Zimbabweans was astounding. So how do you expect to benefit from your diamonds? How do you expect to benefit from your chrome? How do you expect to benefit from your lithium when all you do is complain when you're on social media instead of talking to people about the opportunities that are on the ground and taking advantage of them? Right now, I've been saying to people, African Americans are a great moneyed class, Zimbabweans. Zimbabwe is open for business. Instead of letting the Chinese take up all the opportunity, instead of letting the British and Americans and the Boers from South Africa take up all the opportunity, let us as Zimbabweans partner ourselves, position ourselves, create the capital companies and the investment companies to start consolidating African Americans and getting them to invest in Zimbabwe. Let us look for our chartered accountants to look for methodologies and ways to dodge the sanctions and give opportunity for African Americans to come and invest in Zimbabwe. Because it's the one way that African Americans can take their monies out of this racist system and employ that capital in Zimbabwe to start holding true wealth away from this American racist system. You don't do that. You're even lazy to share videos like this to your American connections, your American friends, so that they start understanding the opportunity that's in your country, where they might even partner you to come and take advantage of opportunity that you might not have the capital to take advantage of. You might not have the balls to take advantage of. You might be too stingy to invest in, but African Americans are looking for people who can tell them more about this opportunity in Zimbabwe. So what I'm here to say to you today, if you don't take the opportunity to take up the claims in your country, if you don't take the opportunity to market your country today to partners, friends, and people in your circle of influence in the Americas, in the Caribbeans, and in Europe where you are, tomorrow when the Chinese jump on the bandwagon, when the Chinese are smart enough to get their friends and families to put money together, to go and buy claims in Zimbabwe, to go and buy gold claims in a Zimbabwe that is open for business, don't cry. Because you are the problem. You, the Zimbabwean who's always pessimist, who gets a drive from talking negative on social media, instead of looking for methods and ways to take advantage of the resources and the opportunity in your country, you are the problem. This is why you don't support people like me and my message, because you want the negativity. You want to moan and bitch instead of being part and parcel of the solution to growing Zimbabwe.
That's why you won't market your nation. That's why you won't see the benefits of your nation. That's why you won't see the opportunity in your nation. But while you have got your eyes closed, the Chinese are seeing the opportunity. Their government is seeing the opportunity. While your government officials are corrupt and not worried about the development of Zimbabwe, the Chinese are looking and they're approaching them with money and saying, there's money. Build a hospital, build a road, stay in power, and then be able to, 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 to take advantage of this opportunity so that the Chinese can get in. It's time to wake up, guys. Here, I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's written Musa Capital. Musa Capital, a group of young Americans who worked on Wall Street, who went to the Ivy League schools in, in, in America, who came to, Zim, to South Africa to open a private equity company to take advantage of African opportunity and bridge it with international capital. Black boys left New York, came to South Africa, established themselves 15 years ago because they know there's capital that's looking for African opportunity. You as Africans, with all your qualifications, you as Zimbabweans, with all your qualifications, do not create these private equity companies. Musa Capital now comes to the continent and they get funds from Nigeria, from Zimbabwe, from Zambia, and they invest your money, African money, because you're sleeping. And that's why I'm now talking to African Americans, saying there's people like Musa Capital, because my brothers and sisters won't create a Musa Capital. My brothers and sisters are too stupid complaining about the problems in Africa, are too stupid supporting political parties that cause our division instead of consolidating to take our opportunity and sell it to the world. It takes Zimbabwe, package it, and brand it to the world. We are too dumb for that. So Musa Capital had to come to South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and do it on your behalf. So I'm saying, for those of you who know African-American friends that want to invest in Africa, people like Musa Capital exist. I would rather people come talk to Musa Capital because my brothers and sisters are not going to do it. I would, rather, I would rather people come from America to invest and partner with Musa Capital rather than for them to partner with ABSA or, or Standard Bank. It's time we wake up. If you're an accountant, if you're a chartered accountant, if you're an investment banker and you're Zimbabwean, South African, or any African country, I'm challenging you to say, if Musa Capital can do it, you can do it too. If Musa Capital can create a fund and a number of funds that are going to take African opportunity, package it, and then give the risk management ability and capacity to be able to channel money from people that are overseas into the African continent, into African opportunity and bring vast returns. Why aren't we Africans bringing that very same capital from our African-American brothers overseas, from our moneyed African brothers in Nigeria, from our moneyed African brothers all over the continent, and bringing that investment into Africa to take advantage of an opportunity that's going to be taken by the Chinese or the Europeans or even the Japanese if we're sleeping. I'm challenging you today. Share this video. Stop being lazy. Stop being lazy to share good content. Stop being lazy to read good content. Stop being lazy to create the institutions that we need. I'm doing my job. I'm speaking. I'm promoting Zimbabwe. I love Zimbabwe. I want the world to know that Zimbabwe is open for business, but I want black people to know that Zimbabwe is open for business. I want African Americans to take advantage of Zimbabwean opportunity before the Chinese do it. I want African Americans, Jamaicans, Nigerians, Every African with money, with a million dollars, with a hundred thousand dollars, with ten thousand dollars to invest it in a Zimbabwean opportunity before the Chinese do it. Because as long as we don't have investment in the country, as long as jobs are not being created in the country, as long as our government doesn't have contributions of taxes, our government is going to be desperate enough to do business with whoever comes with their pocket open. And guess who's got the biggest pockets at the moment? China's got the biggest pockets at the moment. And they will offer your government money that will be used to mortgage or that will, will, will take your resources tomorrow. You've got to be wise, Africans. Stop complaining. Stop crying. Stop always absconding your responsibility for somebody else. Because when somebody else comes and does what you don't do, 
They take a price, and the price is your resources and the future of your children. So, from now on, I'm urging you as Zimbabweans, your nation has got the biggest reserves of lithium, or at least some of the biggest reserves of lithium in the world. That is the oil of the future. It is the petrol of the future. Start talking about that opportunity. Lithium will be big. Rhodium will be big. All these resources are sitting in your country. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of not only Zimbabwe, but even the region that has got copper. The region that has got Kassiterite. This is why Congo is a strategic nation in our region that even Robert Mugabe felt the need to protect it. You can benefit from it. The fact that you haven't been to Kinshasa, the fact that you haven't been to Lusaka, the fact that you don't know the resources in your region is an indictment on you and your education. You are not educated if you don't understand how people make money with ease in your own region while you're going overseas to go and work. So start marketing Zimbabwe. Start reading. Stop being lazy and start telling people about the greatness that is your country, your region, the richest region in the world by mineral resources. In this region alone, we've got in excess of $25 trillion worth of resources. Don't you dream of having a percentage of that? Don't you dream of having a piece of that $25 trillion? Don't you dream of leaving your children part of that legacy? If you're listening to me now, if you are inspired, don't just be inspired. Share the video so that we get people starting to talk about Zimbabwe, starting to think of Africa differently. The Europeans went out of their way to put sanctions on Zimbabwe, to put negative publicity on Zimbabwe, to demarket Zimbabwe. But while they're demarketing it, they're building the biggest U.S. embassy on our soil. While they're demarketing Zimbabwe, Theresa May is sending her ministers to talk to our president. That is because Zimbabwe is special. That is because our region is special. That's why Theresa May was here dancing some jerk dance in South Africa, because this region is the region richest region in the world. Why are you sitting and not marketing it? Why are you not thinking about owning a share of what it is that Theresa May is coming here for? Why are you not looking at this region, at this continent where the U.S. is putting its military as a gold mine, a right to print money? I'm only learning late what resources really mean. I live in a country where men are making millions a day from selling coal. Just the commission on coal makes people millionaires and billionaires because coal drives industry. It drives electricity production. We're not involved. There are no black men. I've got Zimbabwean black people that are working in some of the biggest mining companies in the country that don't even know that people make huge, huge commissions of the resources of this country. They've got no connections to the marketing department. That is ignorance. The fact that we prefer to be nurses and we, we, we prefer to, to be waiters in our continent where we are so rich in resources. The fact that we don't know how to apply for a claim. The fact that we don't understand how it is that you can participate in mining gold just by applying for a mining license and a claim is indicative of ignorance. But anyway, I have told you, it's your turn to market this country, this continent, this region to fellow African-American brothers and sisters that have got money, to Nigerians, to Kenyans, to the whole continent and to billionaires, millionaires and thousandaires that are sitting on this continent before the Chinese come and take that opportunity. And when the Chinese take that opportunity, don't cry. When the Europeans come back Take that opportunity and you have to come back from Europe with a CV to apply to be in a job. Don't cry because you had your opportunity. Mugabe gave it to you on a silver platter and now ED is open for business. If you don't take advantage now, you will be asking for a job in your own country coming from Europe. Let's think. Yet you could have had a time where you owned a mine. You could have had a time where you owned a claim. You could have had a time where you owned land. You could have had a time where you started industry in Zimbabwe. 
Have a good one.